Episode. New plays from Vincent Delaney, Kai Godberg, Elizabeth Heffron, Paul Mullen, and Juliet Prezan. Poetry from Scott Augustin and Elizabeth Heffron. Special guest, Chanteuse, Joanne Klein! And Jose Juicy Gonzalez and the Sandbox Radio Orchestra! Take you into the world of Sandbox Radio Live. Stuart and Miriam by Elizabeth Heffron. All right, ladies, skull, 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 and backstroke tap. Backstroke tap, single ballet leg, double ballet leg. Now pike, down like an oyster, and back up. <gasps> my God, my nose. You need a nose clamp, Lydia. Like a propane tank exploded behind my eyebrow. I said the same thing to her, you gotta get a nose clip. What nose clip? We told you last week. If you want to be a full-fledged member of the Sea Mavens synchronized swim team, you gotta get a nose clip! All right, ladies, listen up. Psst! Hey, Miriam! Let's form a double crocus and go into an opposite circle spin. Miriam! Psst! Hey! Crocus formation, ladies! Stuart? Miriam! Whoa! What? This water gets deep! What are you doing in the pool? This is a sea maven's practice! We're rehearsing now! I know, but you haven't been answering my texts! What? I've been texting you all week and calling. It's like everything's going into a big black hole! I'm not very fond of texts! We had that amazing first date! And then wham, you disappear. Double crocus, sometime before lunch, lady. I didn't disappear, Stuart. Now I'm nervous to put my head under. Hold your nose like this. <gasps> so you got my text? Yes. Well, I haven't heard a word from you, Miriam. Stuart. What? You unbuttoned my blouse. Yes. And put your hand on my breast. Guilty as charged. Why would you do that? Why? Because I wanted to get close to you, Miriam. But I didn't invite you to. Well, what's an invitation but an intermediary step? I was going for the gold, Miriam. But I didn't want you to. Because you're afraid. It doesn't matter my reason. Because you're George. terrified to get real. <laughs> One part of our crocus is out of alignment. God, Stuart, you're ruining the formation. Sorry, I'll just tread water over here. Who's Miriam talking to? I don't have my glasses on. Some newbie with a serious five o'clock shadow. That gal will talk to anybody. <laughs> okay, and circle left. Miriam, I just want you to know that you don't have to be ashamed. I'm not ashamed. It's just me, one man. Small skulls. Small skull. Another traveler in this vast, fucked up universe. Oh my and god! And we talked about so much last Thursday. My divorce, 
your health issues, all of our losses... And to the right... You're blocking my forward motion, Stuart. That's why I wanted to touch it, Miriam. My breast? To give it some adoration. It didn't need adoration. Oh, I think it did. Can we not talk about this now? If not now, then when, Miriam? Now the crocus starts to open like a petulant flower. Open, open. Open! And we're screwing up our timing! Flutter kick! Big motion! Hey, quit splashing me! This is the flutter kick, Stuart! I'm just trying to explain that I... I touched your breast because I could sense that it might give you some confidence! Flutter kick! Flutter kick! I mean, your little smile My was... My little smile? Yes! So propped up and, I don't know, inflated! Like you were pretending, or like my pump. I told you about my pump, didn't I? Don't say another word. Right away. I didn't wait until things got heated. And, oh, by the way, I need to press a button. That's honesty, Miriam. Is that why you haven't replied? I didn't mind about your pump, Stuart. You haven't heard it yet. Now on your back. All together. That's not what bothered me. Flamingo! Well, it bothers me. It's artificial. So what? What is an artificial? Name one thing in this world that's not half pretend these days. Right leg up. I don't mind pretend. As straight as you can. Well, then, I don't get what the problem is. I've got a pump and you've got one breast. Keep your voice down, please. Miriam, we were made for each other. We can be real together. Real? There you go with that word again. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm talking real, baby. I'm talking here and now. I can't hold my nose and keep my leg up at the same time. So get the clip already. We can leave this high-class retirement ghetto and... Real is overrated, Stuart. Overrated? Yes. Baby, what? Real is just a bunch of bullshit beat poet male dogma. What the fuck are you talking about? Don't you shout at me! Miriam, this can't be how you want to live out your life. Get out of the water, Stuart. Hey, wait a second. That's no sea man. That's a man. What's he doing wearing one of our bathing caps? Is this... Is this really how you want to spend your days in some kind of Lawrence Welk Disney fantasy? Some Esther Williams fascist charade? Fascist charade? This makes me happy, Stuart. Happy? What's happy about a pile of bourgeois crap? We should be grabbing the bull by the horns, baby. We should be feeling all of it, even the losses. I don't want to feel the losses. Real, baby. No, Stuart, you don't get to tell me what's real. Thank you, sister. Me and these ladies have spent our entire lives letting guys like you tell us what's real, letting your ego and your precious dick tell us what to want, how to feel, while we sat back and made the sandwiches. Fuck. The sandwiches! Yeah! <laughs> Miriam! No more! Not anymore! Yeah. These are my golden years, you asshole! What are you yeah. talking about? I'm a sea maven because it makes me happy and I like this place and you don't get to pass judgment on that. You can't possibly be serious. Try me. Miriam, you really want to twiddle your days away with a bunch of Betty Whites? Macrameing hernia slings and drinking chi chis Where does this guy get off? Why not? What are you suggesting? Spend my time copying your feels while I listen to your pump? <laughs> Jesus, Miriam! That's too much real for me, Stuart. Hey, Buster! Get out of the goddamn pool! I thought... Yeah, hit the deck. I thought I knew you, Miriam! Maybe a few years ago you might have known me, but not now. Impersonating a sea maven, how low can you go? Ladies, battle stations. I don't think you're welcome here, Stuart. You know the drill. I'm going, I'm going. Barracuda formation! Jesus, Miriam! Spear arm! Don't worry, Stuart. I'm sure you'll find someone who wants to get real with you. You better believe it! Breaststroke! 
breaststroke. And that person's gonna come with a full rack, Miriam. You mark my words. I'd swim a bit faster, Stuart. Rocket blast! <laughs> All right, ladies. Not fun and games. Let's get back to basics. We gotta perfect our Broadway rotations before next week's competition. And backstroke tap, backstroke tap, backstroke tap. Previously on Markheim. This town's getting heavy. A street kid I know just got burned two nights ago on those spooky steps that come out at Union and Terry. What do you mean he got burned? I mean somebody lit him on fire. <laughs> Hello, Markheim. Remember me? Somebody's burning teenage kids. I heard. What's that got to do with me? Sam thinks it's cloud work. Doubtful. But so what? I'm sitting neutral. Sam smells a Markheim. I ain't the only Markheim. But you're the local Markheim. <coughs> Sam figures that makes it your problem. <coughs> Run it down and stop, or your neutrality's in question. <coughs> Sam's words, not mine. Get out of here, kid. She burned my hand. Then you got off fucking lucky. Go. It's burning. Cloud business? What else? Sam's looking for you. He wants you gone. Hmm. I suppose he would. I want you gone. And now, episode four of Markheim by Paul Mullen. <laughs> Still chasing the clockwork, still trying to figure out why I got sent down to flip some two-bit wobbler just so we could wind up twisting from his jail cell bunk. Add to that the appearance of another Markheim saying she had orders from upstairs to burn teenage kids, and it seems like my new hometown is one big mess of mysteries. But there is one problem I can solve nice and easy with a quick six-block walk from my harbor steps to Westlake Park. Who's Park? Our Park! Who's City? Our City! Who's World? Our World! That's my dog. Fuck you, Mark. I want my dog, Stank. It's Liv's dog. Unless you're telling me Liv's dead, then I gotta wonder who killed her. Liv's in Oregon. So you say, but for all I know, you did it on some stairway like you did those other street kids you burned. I didn't burn any kids. The burnings are over. Tell that to Ditch. His hand won't heal up. It still burns, Mark. Who was that lady on the Gaylor steps? She's gone. You don't need to worry about her anymore. It still burns. Rub some blood on it. I want my dog back, Stank. Liv's dog. Fine, Liv's dog. She gave him to me to take care of, and I want him back. Like I said before, Marky, fuck you. And like I said before, Stanky, if I wanted to burn you, you'd be burnt. Now give me the goddamn dog before I make you wish you were ashes. So what's going on? Oh, look, it's Marky's big Indian sidekick. This doesn't concern you, Smiley. Angel threatened some punk in my park. Damn straight it concerned me. Oh, he buys that angel bullshit? Liv. Fucking Tonto's crazier than Mark. Liv gave Mark I'm the dog to watch, Dink. For all I know, Liv's dead, and Marky here killed her. Liv's in Oregon? Everybody on the street knows it? I don't know it. Because you're a stupid poser who sleeps in his parents' garage in Leshai every <laughs> night? You, you have parents? <laughs> Fuck you, Smiley. <laughs> Shut up, Ditch. Fuck you. Fuck you, Stank. <laughs> God damn. What the? What's the matter, Mark? I'm... Hey! Hey! You! What are you doing down here? Who are you yelling at? That chub over there in Ch the gray coat. Chub? Cherub. Angel. Administrative subarchy. Well, your angel friend is making a break for it. God damn it. I gotta catch him. 
Come on, get on. Move it, meat. Come on. Come on. Damn, he's gone. You spooked him, Mark Aim. I spooked the chub, but not as much as the chub spooked me. What the hell is he doing down on the show? Cherubs never leave the fix. Strictly administrative. And this is the chub who passed me my orders to flip the wobbler. And now he's here. Why? Following me? Why? Screw it. If he wants to talk, he can find me. Ain't like I'm hiding. So I wait. Hey, Mark. Hey, you awake? Who's there? It's Didge, Mark. Markheim. I don't care about your name, dude. You gotta help me. It's not a name, it's a title. Only archangels get names. The rest of us go by our titles. Cherub or Chub, Seraph or Seth. Then there's powers, thrones, dominations, virtues, and principalities. Or princes sometimes, but not to their faces. I don't care about any of that. Just as well, it doesn't care much about you. My hand won't stop burning. Of course not. You got grabbed by a burner Markheim. A few more seconds and you'd be gone. That old lady on the Gaylor steps was I a... told you. A Markheim. Like you. Yeah, except a burner. I'm a talker. I tried what you told me. What? You said rub blood on it. Yeah? Yeah, and one of the girls that runs with us, Blow Pop, she's a cutter. A cutter? Yeah, she likes to carve stuff into her arms with an X-Acto knife, especially when she's stressed and stuff, so I asked her if I could have the blood. And it helped? I, a lot. I slept for the first time since the Gaylor Steps. Okay. But it's not enough. No. Nah, wouldn't think it would be. I, I gotta get some reliefs. It's roasting me alive. The nurse at the clinic says there's nothing wrong with me, but... Wrong? Meat, you've been blessed. Blessed? How you figure? That burner gave you a bit of the glow. You got a dose of the holy fire in that hand. So long as it stays attached, you ain't never gonna die. What? Wandering Jew syndrome, we call it. More common than they think. <laughs> what about the pain, the burning? It always comes back. Of course it does. I just told you it's holy fire, it's eternal. What am I supposed to do about it? Seems pretty obvious to me, Meat. This is the show. The world. Pretty much drowning in blood. You shouldn't have trouble finding some. There's pigeons and seagulls, cats, stray dogs. I ain't killing no dog for its blood. You could hang out at hospitals, get a job in one, or at that butcher stall in the market. Human blood's the best, though, to quell the fire. And freshly shed, of course. Best bet would be to make a glove out of some other meat's hand. Takes a little doing, but worth the effort. That could last a full month or so. Blood follows the moon. Uh, what's happening? What are you talking about? There's like a light around you. No. You're glowing. I don't glow. I see. No, you don't. I see what you're doing. You're telling me all the awful things I'm going to end up doing if I don't take care of this the right way. No, I'm not. I feel you, Mark. I understand. No, you don't. Thanks, Mark. It's Markheim. Right. Thanks, Markheim. God damned glow. Who knows what that kid's going to do now? All because of me and my big goddamned mouth. Hey, I found your friend, by the way. What? Your angel friend. What did you call him? Chubb. Gray overcoat. Looking lost and afraid over on the city hall steps. What is it with you angels and stairways? I'd tell you if I knew. Take me there. No. I got shit to do. You can find it. Fourth and James. Do we cloud hoppers spook you, Smiley? Bore me's more like it. I got shit to do. Okay. Thanks for the tip. They ain't free, Markheim. You're on the books now. You owe me. Understood. Good. Fourth and James, City Hall. Figures the chub would be drawn there. Suckers for authority. You! Walk with me. Markheim, you found me. Good. We need to talk. If you wanted to talk, you should have found me. I was... What? 
frightened. It's just the show, Chubb. Just a bunch of meat. They ain't gonna bite you. Well, not most of them. Okay. So can we talk? No talking until we're walking. If I know you're here, I ain't the only one. Let's go. No one knows I'm here. That's crap. What are you trying to pull? You nuts? You're no pow or dom. Chubbs are strictly for the fix. I had to see you. So you've seen me. And give you this. What's that? It's your ticket. Back to the fix. Remember you told me to keep it when the mission was done? I remember. I told you to keep it forever. I can't. It's hot. Upstairs is wondering why you haven't come back. If they find this on me, it's trouble. For you? Yeah, for me. Your decision to stay down here is putting the light on me. Seths are starting to whisper that I aided your defection. Seths will whisper. They got nothing on you. They will if they find this ticket. How did you even get down here? How does a chub strictly celestial come by his own ticket to the show? It's not mine. It's a friend. And who's your friend? A throne. That doesn't make any more sense than you having a ticket. Thrones are fixed cops. They got no jurisdiction down here. Only pows, doms, princes, and the occasional virtue. Thrones don't work wet. I don't know what to tell you. My friend's a throne. Your friend's a liar. No, just trying to help me. You put the light on me. Just take your ticket and come back. I'm never going back. Then at least take the ticket. Please. Why? They'll find it on me eventually. There's no place to hide it up there and no secrets for long. You know that. I never told you to keep it a secret. What was I supposed to do? You know how they are. So get rid of it. Down here, since you're down here. Lose it in the show. What? Just toss it in the trash. Throw it in the sea. Angels never check the sea. Demons neither. It's off territory. Dead neutral. They expect you to come back. Ball it up and throw it in the sound. The sound? The Puget Sound, right there in front of you. All that dark water. All right. There. It, it sank. Good. Now get back to the fix. I'll go. Just... I've never seen anything like this. The water? It's frightening and beautiful. At the same time, look how the moon plays in it. Light shadow. Light shadow. There's nothing like that in the fix. Nope. Can I stay and watch it? Just for a while. <laughs> how would I stop you? But understand, you're pushing it. This is Sam's town. I can't protect you. I'm walking neutral. Will you stay with me? Sorry, Chubb. Two angels together in the show. It's a liability. All right. I'll only stay till the moon sets. I'll keep my head down. Do that. So long, Markheim. So long, Chubb. Hello, Chubb. <laughs> know who I am? Oh. Name's Mara, smoke choker. Maybe we never met. You'll remember me next time, right? <laughs> what am I saying? There ain't gonna be no next time. Cause where you're going, you ain't never gonna forget me. Not for a single searing second, right? Cause things can always get uglier, chub. Believe it. Next time on Markheim. We need to talk, Markheim. Who the fuck are you? Markheim, you are in the presence of the Archangel Ragel, Septarch of all celestial dominations. On your feet and show the proper respect when answering his ascendancy. My apologies, your ascendancy. Yes, 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 that's fine. You can dispense with the formalities. There's simply no time for them. Our business is urgent. And this moisture is most repellent. You were visited by a cherub several Earth turns ago. That's right. I sent him back up to the fix. Yes. Well, he didn't make it back. What? As you might put it, the chub got smoked down to the crisp. 
Markheim, you left him unprotected. I couldn't stay. Two angels in one place in the show. It would have been a provocation. A provocation? To whom? Whom else? I've been having weird dreams. So? Angels don't dream. Oh. I think some shit is about to happen if I don't do something to prevent it. I thought you were laying low. So did I. But now I gotta talk to somebody. Who? Who else? I gotta talk to Sam. Don't miss the next episode of Markheim. Because things can always get uglier. Why We Run, a poem by Scott Augustson. Consider the gazelle, or more to the point, the gazelle's leg, a beautiful machine of strong bones, ropey muscles, persnickety nerves from its sturdy hooves to its sexy haunches. It has spent millions of years doing nothing but evolving, evolving a superhuman ability to outrun lions. No, that's not really right, is it? It doesn't need to outrun lions. It needs to outrun other gazelles. The herd has not been reading Karl Marx. The herd has been reading Shirley Jackson. It's the grazers, the cud chewers, the vegetarians. They're the real cutthroats, aren't they? As we flee our way through life, keeping as much distance as we can between us and, well, whatever the heck it is back there, even a glance over the shoulder seems reckless. On a good day, you can't even feel the hot breath on the back of your neck. Sure, sure, the day will come when we are eaten by sheer attrition, or silly mistake, or just the inevitable tick of the clock. Eaten. It'll just be a day, an ordinary Wednesday, or three days before Christmas, or Ted's birthday. Years later, your cousin will say, oh, I know, it was just after the 10th, that's when the government benefits checks come. You know what that means around here, crazy town. From time to time, some fool, some hemp-wearing fool says, this is beyond ridiculous. No one is chasing. There is no monster. It is our own footsteps we hear. Come, let's, you and me, stop. Sit down at this convenient sidewalk cafe. We'll order champagne. The waiter will bring flowers for us to smell. We'll seize the day. We'll seize it in Latin, carpeing the diem. We'll seize it in pig Latin, easing, say, the A-day. <laughs> what say, friend? How about a rest? And you say, that sounds great, but um, you first, buddy. <laughs> Consider the gazelle. Her last moments as she lies there, being eaten. If she is a well-read gazelle, she might wonder, why should a pampered lapdog, an animal who has only ever chased his own tail, only ever hunted in his sleep, be the one privileged to an easy death, held tight and crooned to, a tiny needle the only intrusion? Why do I have to endure this pain, this fear? Yes. It is the great circle of life, but it's not beautiful. It's not noble. It's anything but beautiful. It's awful. It's natural. Nikes? Seriously? Nikes? Why? We can't outrun the bear. <laughs> oh, 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 my friend. The bear? No. Down a rabbit hole I could chase
chase a squirrel up a telephone pole. I could chase alligators for my gator shoes. But there's a one thing, baby, I ain't gonna do. You know I ain't gonna chase after you. After the American dream I could chase big money with a Ponzi scheme I could chase my fame in the movies too But there's one thing, baby, I will never do Oh, I ain't gonna chase after you about John Lennon? Shit, that shit wasn't even meant for him. What? That bullet, supposed to be Paul McCartney, yo. That's who dude wanted to shoot. Really? McCartney? That's a fact. And dude will never get out of prison. Well, you know, they were all Irish. Well, sure. And I always thought it must have been weird growing up Irish in London. Must have been really hard for him. Where the music came from, you know. Yeah, well, the thing about this is they didn't, well, well they didn't mention it, but but Billy Preston was the fifth Beatle, and, and it was the times they couldn't talk about it. And, and they, they listened to, to Muddy Waters and Robert Johnson, and they were all about the blues. You ever listen to Dr. Professor Longhair? No. Well, listen to the professor, and you'll hear it all. All of them are in there. Yeah, well, listen, man, there's nothing new under the sun. This message brought to you by the back of the 358 bus to Aurora Village. <laughs> The 358, Seattle's first choice in mobile dangertainment. All conversations guaranteed overheard on the back of the 358. Names and identities withheld to maintain fabulousness. The back of the 358. Never would have been the Beatles if they didn't grow up Irish in London. (laughs) 
Straight with Chaser by Kai Gottberg. Mmm. Pretty poison with little daggers of ice. Mmm, that's nice. I like them bruised, my Manhattans, which is why I shake them hard. Well, my electronic shaker shakes them. I just tip and pour. I see you found your seat, comfy. You like my castle here by the sea? I'd offer you one of these, but that's Sheila. Oh, she's a hot little package today. Every day. Wonder what she's up to. Hey, hey. That looks cold. That dress is steamy. You like? I don't usually do pinks, but this one fits so fine here. Yeah. And here that I couldn't resist. Me neither. Bring that on over here. Oh, you want me to sit, baby? No, no. Just stand close so I can breathe in all your fine pinkness. <laughs> Mmm, the pulchritudinous personification of pink. Oh, renders me helpless. If I could be more helpless. What do you call this stuff? Taffeta. Slick. Mmm, <laughs> where are you off to? I'm just going down, down, baby, down by the rolling seashore. <laughs> I'll be waiting for your up to the minute, sweetheart. I know you will. I'm just going to tear off all this pink, and I'm out of here. Hmm. Sheila. I found her on Craigslist, the seeking section. She's a seeker, all right. Pretty much finds whatever it is she seeks, which she will be doing in a few minutes. I'll be along for the ride, whatever that means to Sheila. Oh, God bless Sheila. She enjoys the chase. She says she was just browsing. Wasn't even looking for anything. Yeah, right. If you saw her, you wouldn't think, pretty, but the shapes a bright container can contain. Thank you, Theodore Retke. I measure time by how a body sways. Ooh, already, that's her now. Hi, baby. I'm suiting up. Here's Gwen. <laughs> Clarence, hi, sugar. Want to know what I'm wearing? Oh, I'm all ears. It's tight. It's black. Mm. It's rubbery. Oh. <laughs> Any jewelry? Just the goddess Kali dangling between the girls, her tongue lolling. <laughs> Is that a verb? To loll? Lolling. It's an exciting way to droop. <laughs> what else? And a mask. <laughs> and with our tanks on, we are ready for action. Oh, I bet you are. Should be a great show, not to mention the star. Hand that over. <laughs> Clarence, baby, we're going in. I'll be back in touch soon. Looking forward. Bye. Oh, now, where was I? Oh, yeah, Seeking. Sheila the Seeker. She saw my ad entitled Adventurous Wanted. Snappy opening, right? Quadriplegic who can't do much desires to live vicariously by sponsoring your well-financed adventures in the realms of the senses. Some knowledge of electronics helpful, but not necessary. <laughs> I had my lawyer weed out the weirdos, and there were a lot of those. Chicks wanting to help me. Mother types who wanted to nurse. Yuck. And out of the few remaining was Sheila. Made for Clarence, used by Clarence. Or is it vice versa? Vice, definitely. My sweet vice, Sheila. My adventurous. I'm not completely helpless. It's a C5 injury. I have some triceps, can push and pull. Well, more importantly, can do some reaching and pouring. I'm a rich man from the settlement. My investments are all sound. I've got a caretaker, Ben, who deals with the rudiments, and a housekeeper, Juana, who cooks and fusses over me. And I have Sheila. Or Sheila has me. 
Can you hear me? Perfectly. I can feel the coldness, even though I am warm. Up my legs, my back. We have these two huge lights, but beyond them, it's very dark. Scary dark. What? Oh, it's just so different. Different than daylight. We're under the pier. It's not that deep, maybe 25 feet. Oh, wow. Oh, Clarence, there she is. She's halfway out by now. Oh, wow. Oh, stay with me, doll. I can see one, two, no, three of her arms snaking up the pier. Her head, her colors are pulsing. Oh, you know, flushing over her surfaces and her little pink suckers. Oh, Clarence, she's beautiful. Wow. Oh, hang on, babe. I'm right with you. You just keep going. Oh, man. Her other arms are starting to... She's coming out. Wow. Gwen is so close to her. Oh, my God. She's wrapping an arm around... Clarence, are you with me? Gwen is so crazy. I can't believe it. She wasn't lying. Wow. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. And here is where I tune you out and tune myself into the private and plentiful joys of Sheila. Sheila in octopus world, chasing sensation, dancing in the dark waters. I'm here listening, lolling with desire, desire for all her lovely body can experience. <gasps> Maybe a bourbon straight. Ah. Mm. And now a little chaser. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh my god, this octopus. This octopus? This octopus can dance. Clarence, you there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tell me everything. <laughs> You're listening to Sandbox Radio Live, Episode 4, The Chase, recorded on April 16th, 2012, at West of Lenin in Seattle, Washington. Sandbox Radio depends on the generous financial support of listeners like you. For more information, please visit us online at thesandboxac.org. Now, back to The Chase. Sandbox Radio Gotta move, gotta get out, gotta leave this place, gotta find some place, some other place, some brand new place, some place where each face that I see won't be staring back at me, telling me what to be and how to be it. Some place where I can just be me. Always disappearing. By Juliet Prezan. Hello? Hey, are you Anton? <laughs> yeah? Huh? What? I gotta get across that lake. Now? Now. It's gonna be dark soon. Sounds good. You got someone waiting on the other side? I hope not. Can we leave? Hold your horses. It'll just take a sec to get my stuff together. Do you hear that? Nope. Well, I do. You ready? You got money? Yeah, yeah. I've been working in town. Well, grab those <coughs> oars and get... I'm in. Let's go. Better? 25 feet from shore is better. Got it. Thanks. So, you were working in town? Yeah. Where? Our lettuce place. <laughs> Are you a listener? I am. When I need to be. Was business good? I don't know if I'd call it good, but in three days, 24 lonely men paid me to listen to their sad stories. Not bad, I suppose. I get tips for wiping away their tears with the cuff of my shirt. <laughs> you ever been in? No one wants to hear my story, even if I'm paying them. You never know. Well, that's certainly true. So. You live down here? Yep, for about five years now. I take people in my rowboat when they need it. 
You get a lot of business? So-so. But it's always people like you, running from something. I wouldn't run if I didn't have to. You have to, huh? Always have, and I assume always will. Hmm. So, how long you been a listener? Sort of forever. Runs in my family. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a long story. It's a big lake. That's true. You want some help rowing? It's not as easy as it looks. I'm pretty good at it. Sounds like you have a world up your sleeve. <laughs> I guess you could say that. So, what's your story? You going to be my listener now? Huh. I could be, unofficially. I think I'll just enjoy the ride. Oh, come on. I spend a lot of time listening to fish. <laughs> Boring fish with tiny mouths. <laughs> Nothing to say. I don't know. All the fish talk about is what they eat for dinner. What do they eat for dinner? It's too boring. I'll fall asleep if I say it out loud. Well, that's okay. Remember, I know how to row a boat. Oh, come on. You really want to hear? I do. Okay. Well, I wasn't born in this country. Oh? Where? Far, far from here across oceans, in an uneasy country. My parents were carnival people. My dad had a cake. A cake? A big one, made of wood. It had a little door cut into the side. You went inside and you told him your secrets. Step right up, step right up. Tell your secrets to the man in the cake. Get them off your chest right now, right here. How much? Three tokens. Here you go. Welcome to my cake. Have a seat. Thank you. So, you have a secret you want to tell. What do you do with them, once I've told you? Have you wandered around the carnival today, seen the magnificent sights? Uh, some more magnificent than others. Oh? There are beautiful tattooed women and horrifying snake-tongued men. Did you notice the stall run by the lady and her child? Both have wild, untamed hair. Mm, she's selling tiny cakes, yes? Oh, they look just like miniature versions of this one. Yes. That is my wife and daughter. My wife is the best baker in the world. But my secret? I give her the secrets, and she bakes them into the tiny cakes. Once you eat it, the secret is always yours, forever. It's gone? It's gone from anyone but you. So you must know. What? You have to be strong enough to hold it in forever. I can. I know it. Fine. Go ahead. May I lean in? May I whisper? You may. And this was your father? Yes. And my mother was the baker. And you were... You are the girl with the wild hair. That's me. <laughs> Is that all? Oh, yes. Thank you for your time. It will be ready in about ten minutes. Give my wife this token. She'll give you your special cake. How will you know it's mine? <laughs> Don't worry, there's never been a mix-up. What happened? My mother, for the first time, allowed me to give the cake to its owner. All I had to do was place it in her palm. I suspect things didn't go as planned. Do you have your token? You're awfully young to be working at the fair, aren't you? Oh, I'm very responsible. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Mm. Mm. But I gave her the wrong one. She ate someone else's secret. I can't imagine what it was, but it made her mad, crazy. She ran toward the knife thrower. 
Watch my brave assistant spin on the wheel, ladies and gentlemen. Look at her flawless skin. Never a nick, never a scratch. My aim is so perfect, I could safely throw a knife at your baby. I will throw the first three knives in quick succession. A one. A two. And she ran in front of the knife thrower's knives. Oh! Oh my. It was horrid. It didn't take them long to figure out what had happened. But it was an accident. The girl's father was furious and powerful. It was a country built on vengeance and they wanted our heads. So we left. That's my story. But then what? You want to hear more? I assume the story doesn't end there. I assume your story doesn't start here, at the lake. Maybe I'll tell you later. Really? Perhaps. Go on. Well, we hitched up the cake to our horse and got out of town as fast as we could. My dear wife and child. Yes, Daddy? I'm sorry. <laughs> Daddy! He left you. He was a good man, and he loved us, but every time he looked at us, he saw his past as a great collector of secrets and his future always running with no end in sight. Did you ever see him again? Watch out for that log floating towards us. No. He simply vanished. My mother and I kept going. Walking as fast as we could, we dragged the cake. Mommy, I'm bored. Why don't I teach you how to whistle? And so, while we walked, she taught me how to whistle. It turns out I had a remarkable skill. Wow. What? This is strange. It's just that I'm always the listener. This is kind of nice. Thank <laughs> I you. might have to get a job down at Arletta's place when I get back. Well, who will take people across the lake? You're good with a rowboat, right? I'm good at moving, not waiting for people. Moving, right. You were walking. We got to a town that was relatively safe. We set up our cake in the woods and went into the square during the day. Lola, dear, you perform your whistling here. On this corner, I'll put out a bucket. I'll be sitting on that bench over there, watching to make sure you're safe. Did it work? People crowded around, and I whistled and whistled. They dropped coins in our bucket. And one day I took my break and went to find my mother on her bench. Mama! Mama? Mommy! They had found her. Who? The people who had chased us out of town. And right then, by myself this time, I ran away again. That's quite a story. Now, what's yours? Oh, my story is all gloom and doom. You don't want to hear it. Doom and gloom don't bother me. You might be surprised. At what? Telling. It's okay. All right, then. My story started, I suppose, when my wife fell apart. Fell apart? She was overcome with time. She probably could have withstood growing old. It was that our son was growing up, too. She couldn't take it. Oh, I see the beach there. Old steady. It's a little choppy going in. What happened? Our son grew up and moved out of the house. That day, she went into mourning. She pined. She stood by the door, not knowing what to do. She pulled out her eyebrows. Wow. She went to see doctors and healers. They gave her tonics and salts and ideas. Did they help? For a day or so, but then she'd be back at the door or the window, picking at her hair or her lips. Poor woman. One morning, I woke up, and there was a pile of dust with her dress over it. She just fell apart? I didn't know what to do. Eventually, I moved her dress and swept her up. Oh, my. 
hospital. Oh, my. I couldn't bear to be in the house any longer. Our son didn't want it either, so I sold it and moved down here. Does your son visit? Sometimes. We don't want to talk about his mother. It's hard to have a conversation when there is so much you don't know how to talk about. But he does come occasionally. We drink tea and look at the water. Oh, look. We're here. We are. Thank you for the ride and... It was my pleasure. It was. Truly. I have to go. Do you really think they're still looking for you after all this time? I do, though I don't know that I could sit still even if they weren't. Well, maybe you could come back and I could row you across the lake again? I think I could do that. Gotta move. Gotta get out. Gotta leave this town. Gotta find some town. Some big new town. Some bright new town. in this club broke my pocket. This girl, she kept asking me for my number, and I was like, I just don't give my number to just any bitch. She'd up here and jaw with me for a little bit. Don't just give your number to any bitch. Hell no. This one homegirl of mine is half Mexican, half Persian. Russian? No, Persian. But she can only speak Mexican and English. Yeah? But she look Persian, and every guy to meet her is like, yo, speak some Persian. But she can't, so they get all bent and shit. Ooh, she fine? Oh, she hell fine. Yeah? Well, yeah, sort of. She like, out to here, up here. But then she all narrow on the bottom. Yeah? Yeah, like the top is bomb. And the bottom's bomb, too, but it'd be smaller, you know? This message brought to you by the back of the 358 bus to Aurora Village. The 358, Seattle's first choice in mobile dangertainment. All conversations guaranteed overheard on the back of the 358, names and identities withheld to maintain fabulousness. The back of the 358. Don't just give your number to any bitch. <laughs> Child of the Second Tier, a poem by Elizabeth Heffron. So, we begin this dance, you and me, alone in a room with 12-inch lead walls, and outside, through the toughened glass, a pair of sunny lab techs give the send-off wave and push a button which starts my massive door to slowly shut, cutting us both off from your former world. You will hear me hiss, almost a sigh, as a hot mess of radionuclides, vacuum sealed and silly with anticipation, are sent jetting into the chambers of my steel and carbon neck. All this before the chase even begins. And there you are, a 50-year-old statue, young to some, your head held like stone in a fiberglass vise. And me, 20 tons of sexy, free to roam the room and your body with a high-pitched whine on the hunt for those wily anarchic cells you have so blithely invited into your system. We will duck and cover this way for 35 days, and when we part, you will leave the hospital, if not cured, then infinitely better, or possibly worse. You've read the New York Times expose. There are no guarantees. But please note, failure is not in our mission statement, and hope will forever dangle before us like an old Obama sign. Of course, you know all this. You signed the consent forms with that elegant big pharma pen that kept 
slipping from your fingers the way those glasses seem to slide down your nose. But back to the beginning. We must make a mask. It will feel like kindergarten. Plaster of Paris, the cat in the hat. We will cover your eyes, your entire face, in a warm mud. A clean medicinal mud. Not to be confused with swamp mud, the smelly St. Louis Concordia Pond mud you used to fashion into pies in 110 degree heat with chipper white. We will be careful to place two plastic mini cones up your nostrils while the plaster sets to make sure you can breathe. Wouldn't want to lose the patient to the process. That is not the intention. Once the mask has hardened, it will become your ally, your partner, the one protection you have from my insistent advances. Its only goal is to prevent a mistake in the field, as they say. We are aiming with micron precision at the laryngeal tissues on the right side of your neck. Not your tongue, not your thyroid, nor your brain stem. Those would be considered off target. Others worry about this possibility more than I do. To me, tissue is tissue. Whatever I hit, I destroy. Which will not only cause your hair to fall out, but will send the acrid, slightly lemony odor of annihilated flesh floating around the room like a prom in Afghanistan. When you mention this to the resident, the one with the semi-mohawk who stays safely behind the 12-inch walls, he will tell you there is no smell. It's all in your mind. He is wrong. You are right. Never believe anyone with a semi-mohawk. <laughs> it is the death scent of your own cells. After the mask, finally, we commence. You and me. We will plant our feet in flights of fancy. You, tattooed and strapped down, your mouth guard in tight, battling migraines and weight loss and misery. And me, like an airy mechanical eel, with no feeling at all in a flat glass face, step ball changing in the vapors around you. For 35 days, I will take aim, and in your mind, you will run, until your mouth becomes a desert, your throat a blistered battlefield so painful, a 75 microgram fentanyl patch does not quite cover the screaming ache, and you succumb to the shadowy pleasures of a Vicodin high more often than is respectable. You will feed yourself through a tube in your stomach. Your nose will run and your scalp will itch. You will throw up in the most public of places. Eventually, you will become so weak you need a walker to trudge past the broken red truck to the garbage can a distance of 35 feet. And in a sublime sort of joke, I will leave your pubic regions blissfully alone so that you and he will ponder the imperative of this, the preciousness and attempt moments of union in new and oddly mechanical ways. All this you will go through for life's sake, to stay alive, to find new meaning in home and family and friends, to become a member of a new sect, an irradiated child of the second tier, and dream about things supremely impractical, an MFA, a walking tour of Ireland, and a chance to fail at everything so brilliantly, you will shine. I'm always chasing Watching clouds 
drifting by my schemes are just like all my dreams waiting in the skies some fellas look and find the Get a winning sometime. I never even make a gain. Believe me, I'm always chasing rainbows, hoping to find a little. Bluebird in Chasing rainbows, hoping to find a little bluebird in there. <laughs> Miss Joanne Klein. All right, well, look, I'm on this bus. Let me talk to your ass when I get home. All right, hugs and kisses. I love you too, baby. All right. What up, man? What's up, babe? How you do? Oh, shit, I had to go to town for a couple of days. Uh-huh. I had to do one of them quick licks to make, you know? Oh, yeah. You know when we get back, we're gonna do it again on the bus. What you got? Oh, yeah, Miami Vice on, Miami Vice on here, man. I'm in a warehouse that manufactures drugs. It's yeah. pretty damn good. Got a lot of action to it. It's a little difficult at times, but you get to reload, change guns, pick up their guns. Oh, he just got in the wrong spot. I want to get his ass. My, my nephew got this one game, right? And, and he was going into the streets and start killing everybody, you know? Fighting everybody. Taking advantage and, and smashing everybody, man. He was killing everybody, you know? Yeah. I forgot the name of that one. This thing right here, I bought it for like two bucks and I've been dogging the shit out of it. I'd be up at three o'clock in the morning drinking a beer, playing the damn game, man. My friend trying to tell me, put that game down, come to bed. I'd be like, okay, but you know that? That ain't gonna happen. Hey, can I get back door? Hang up, Frank. All these damn folks, man. I'm gonna pay you. <laughs> there you go. Tell the truth. Ain't trying to steal your money and run off. This message brought to you by the back of the 358 bus to Aurora Village. The 358, Seattle's first choice in mobile dangertainment. All conversations guaranteed overheard in the back of the 358. Names and identities withheld to maintain fabulousness. The back of the 358. You know when I get back, we're going to do it again on the bus.
Squeeze Play by Vincent Delaney. Someone please untie me. I think I just moved a toe. Hello, my toe is loose. You might as well surrender. Are those rats? Well, at least someone here likes me. Excuse me, hey, I think it's feeding time. My rats are getting restless. Can you please come feed my rats? Heil Hitler. Sorry, Fritz, no spreckensy Deutsch. Vous parlez français, je m'appelle Gertrude. Je suis militaire. Hey, crowd boy, I'm an army file clerk. I push paper from one end of the office to the other. On slow days, I push it back. Look up file clerk, there's a picture of a board girl. That's me. We could talk baseball, Yankees or Dodgers? Brooklyn Dodgers, of course. You know English. Do you understand your situation? Why did you let me babble on like that? You are likely to be shot today. Hey, file clerk, army. There's no uniform. I was on leave, vacation. In a combat zone, no uniform. I am not a spy. Who said anything about spies? Of course, spies don't wear uniforms, do they? Women make terrible spies. And how do you know that? I watch a lot of movies. Hmm. Where did you learn your impeccable French? My French isn't that great. Flawless. Such skill in a file clerk. So much talent in your country and they can afford to waste yours? I like filing. <laughs> Do you? I must have misunderstood your metaphoric digression. Your English is amazing. Perhaps I should apply as a file clerk. <laughs> Then we'd both be overqualified. I'm not important. It's office work, very dull. You like excitement? A certain amount, yes, not this much. A night out, a good movie. Casablanca, Humphrey Bogart, Ingrid Bergman. You know that film? Mm, my favorite. Round up the usual suspects, wonderful. Wasn't it though? Gosh, I love that part. We were all weeping. There is Dan Carter. Danke. Wie es passt, huh? We wish you much pleasure with the chain. <laughs> <laughs> so boys get carried away. Forgive them. Fritzy, you wouldn't do this to a girl, would you? What is that? Meat hook for hanging carcasses. Not funny. Mm. Almost forgot. I found this folder in your purse. Very naughty to go through a lady's purse, Fritz. Names, numbers, funny symbols. We don't get it. Read the cover. S-C-D. Yeah. We've never heard of that. What is that? The army's full of acronyms. It means letters that stand for... I know what acronym means. You seem nervous. I'm fine. S-C-D. No guess? Nothing? Sanitary Cooking Department. Ah, really? Stovetop cleanliness detail. <laughs> Special cakes and donuts. You see the names? Read them. Traveler. Apache. Thunder 19. Strange, aren't they? Just names. So you know a Mr. Traveler. Your boss is a Sergeant Apache. Does Eisenhower have 19 cats, one of which is named Thunder? Gosh, these sound like spies to me. I'm requesting the Red Cross in my status as a prisoner of war. You're not a prisoner. You're not even officially here. We can hang you on the hook, and your family will never see the body. How do you like this castle? It's fine. You don't think it's drafty? <laughs> I can never get warm in here, like an icebox. I like it cold. Your driver has confessed. You're a spy. I don't believe that. He got tired of the hook. Very effective, the hook. You seem uptight. Of course I'm uptight. I'm stuck in a castle full of Nazis. Who wouldn't be worried? <laughs> American sense of humor. Really strange. <laughs> Wasn't a joke. I have to write a report. Goes to my boss. If we keep this file clerk nonsense, our time together will be over. I will take no pleasure in seeing you on the hook. Could have fooled me. Say the truth. I am a file clerk. No, you're not. I used to file. You don't know a thing about filing. At least do a better job of pretending and stop talking so much. You go on and on. Baseball movies. Listen to you. 
You have a right to be silent unless you are a spy. In that case, you have to work. You have to convince me. I'm not talking that much. There you go again. Listen to you. I like to talk. Could have fooled me. I have two kids. Seven and nine missed their birthdays. Of course I write, but it's been months. Why are you still talking? Why? They don't take women with children as spies. You know an amazing amount about spies for a file clerk. I read it somewhere. You're caught in a jeep at the front. No uniform, suspicious papers, you lie about your job, and I'm supposed to believe you were on vacation? Do better than that. Tell me something better. I cannot write that down. Gosh, you seem uptight. Stop lying. It's a load of goddamn horse hooey. Are you sure you're German? Knock, knock. <laughs> Heil Hitler, Frau Kommandant. Ah, there she is. Our honored guest, I am so very pleased to meet you. I am a military clerk. I was on leave. I'll give you my name, my serial Hush. number. Hush. Hush. You have beautiful skin. Such beautiful, lovely skin. Do you mind? Mm -hmm. Like paper. Like the rarest, most delicate paper. She is going to speak the truth. Give me time. Of course. Please continue. I'll be waiting right outside. I was on leave. I'm telling the truth. Mm, I would so love to work with your skin. Now that is one crazy Nazi. <laughs> Some of them are almost sane, but that one. <laughs> stop it, Fritz. Just stop it. She's going to cut you. She's going to hang you upside down. She'll take sections off you, and she'll make me hold the knife. And man, am I sick of that. <laughs> no more lies. Look. Don't make me write this crap down. Give me a better story, please. It was a date. What? My driver, he propositioned me. We wanted to go someplace secret. You are married? Of course I'm married. A tryst? He had a jeep. We left our uniforms. We were looking for a place. Is that enough? Do you get it? Do you need the details? A date? Yes. Good. I believe you. <laughs> you do? Oh, for sure. I can spot a liar. Got a degree in psychology. Berlin? Lord, no. NYU. <laughs> New York? If you ever interrogate, watch the pupils. Most guys focus on body language, forget that. Go for the pupils. Dilation gives it away every time. I believe you. Wait, New York? You were lonely. Everybody believes that. Every guy here is lonely. And this driver, this persistent fellow, Good-looking guy. No one's gonna blame you. That's why no uniform. That's why so nervous. Good! Super! Let's write it down. Where are you from? Brooklyn. Where else? What? Last 20 years. Ran a diner, stone's throw from Ebbets Field. Go Dodgers! You're an SS officer. Not by choice. But please don't spread that around. I got absolutely no sense of humor around here. <laughs> How did you get here? I also got two kids. Big Yankee fans, but what can you do? <laughs> they don't speak a word of German. Can you imagine? So, 1939, I bring them on holiday to see the fatherland, show them their roots, little field trip. You want to talk bad timing. <laughs> You're an American. German passport. Never got around to changing it. Such is life. Where are your children? Yeah, that would be nice to know that, wouldn't it? They forced you? Yeah. Let's... Uh, Get you untied, eh? Yeah. My brother's a minor leaguer, pitcher for the Dodgers farm team. <laughs> I mean, the kid has an arm. You been to a game? Uh, not lately. You get out of this, catch a game, you ask him for his autograph, he'll melt, I mean it. Your kid's like a good hot dog? Sure. Yeah, chow's on me next time. Yeah, sorry about the ropes, it's kind of a Nazi thing. <laughs> Yeah, danke. Yeah, we Vincent schon unterwegs. Would you mind screaming a little? Just a quick one. What? Just give it a go. The boys are starting to wonder. Please. Ah! 
maybe a little more convincing. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man, I'm thirsty. Uh, mm -mm. I hate this German piss water. <laughs> Don't tell these guys that. They'll shoot me for sure. I, uh, I can't think of the right toast. To the Dodgers. To the Dodgers. Uh, a spy would be nervous wanting to keep her wits. A prisoner of war, well, she'd probably take it in one big swig. Yeah, that's the stuff. Lieutenant. Gosevich, William. Uh, call me Billy, only in here, understand? Billy. Did he confess? Your driver? No, we just say that stuff to try to scare you. What would happen if you ever made a mistake? As a prisoner? You mean if one got by me? If I was wrong? Bad. All that hanging upside down stuff I told you? That would be you. And uh, now, thank God for NYU. Let's drink to that. To psychology. To psychology. Ah, so, just out of curiosity, tell me, what does SCD stand for? It's really been swell It's really been great Just to be with you this show, visit us online at thesandboxac.org. Tonight, the Sandbox Radio players were... Megan Ayers. Eric Ray Anderson. Sean Bellier. Christine Marie Brown. Kai Gottberg. Nick Pullman. Charles Leggett. Todd Jefferson Moore. Peter Dylan O'Connor. Rebecca Olson. Catherine Van Meter. Richard Zyman. With our special guest, Chad Tews, Joanne Klein. <laughs> And the Sandbox Radio Orchestra, Dan Tierney on drums. Dave Pascal on the bass. Rob Whitmer, accordion and clarinet. Chuck Leggett on the harp. And Jose Juicy Gonzalez on the keys. And I'm Leslie Law. So Catherine and Megan are going to bring out some lyric cards because now's the time of the show when you guys sing along with us. I think you know the tune. Here we go.
good night. The members of the Sandbox Artist Collective. This episode of Sandbox Radio Live was recorded on April 16, 2012 at West of Lennon in Seattle, Washington. It was engineered by Christopher Stewart and mixed by Dave Pascal. Our stage manager was Colleen Nielsen. Sandbox Radio depends on the generous financial support of listeners like you. To make a donation and access our podcast archive, visit us online at thesandboxac.org.